My name's Helen Treadwell and I'm Education Development Manager um, at Leicestershire Cares. Leicestershire Cares are a charitable organisation and um, the Education Department is responsible for linking businesses with schools in the community. Um, we're joined today by Kelly and Nick. Um, I won't tell you too much about them because they're going to explain who they are and what they do and, and who they work for. And I'm going to pass you over first um, to Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so my name's Kelly and I am the Human Resources Manager at Hinkley and Rugby Building Society. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about my career and the career opportunities that are available at Hinkley and Rugby Building Society. Um, so to start, when I left school, I wasn't really too sure what career path I wanted to take. Um, all of my friends were going on to college and really knew what they wanted to do. Um, I didn't really have any idea, to be honest. Um, so I decided to join an apprenticeship scheme in business administration and really to develop my knowledge on administration within an office environment. Um, I worked as an admin assistant and I got paid to do so under the apprenticeship scheme. Um, and I also studied towards my business administration during that time as well um, for my level two qualification. I then moved on um, from this role to another organisation where I worked within sales support, um, really to expand my skills and um, complete my level three in business administration um, to really kind of progress that qualification. And at this point, I started to think about what I wanted my future career path to look like. Um, I really kind of reflected on my previous roles around what I enjoyed the most and what I enjoyed about the companies that I'd worked for. Um, and my tutor at the time, as I was completing my level three qualification, asked me if I'd ever thought about going into human resources. Um, and to be honest, I've not really heard of it before. Um, I wasn't sure what human resources was. Um, and I spent some time doing some research into human resources to really understand what the purpose of the roles were and what that career path looked like. Um, and also the kinds of qualifications that I would um, need to complete to be able to follow that career path. So I found the research very interesting, um, which is what landed me in the job that I'm in today. Um, and I liked the idea of being able to support people in work um, and helping um, make a positive work experience for employees. So I went on then to complete my human resources qualifications with the Chartered Institute of Personal Development, which are also known as the CIPD. And my first human resources role came around four years after completing my first CIPD qualification, where I was employed as a HR administrator within a construction firm. Um, and it was very difficult to secure this role as the market was very challenging. Um, and I didn't let the challenge stop me from fighting for the career that I wanted and the career that I'd worked so hard towards. Um, I then landed my dream job, which is my current role as Human Resources Manager at Hinkley and Rugby Building Society, where I've been for two years. Um, and I'd always said to myself throughout my career that my, my end kind of goal was to be a HR manager. And that was what I was striding towards. Um, I've recently started studying for my master's degree in strategic leadership, um, which has been supported by my employer. Um, and I'm coming up to completing my first year in that now, which is fantastic. Um, and I really enjoy all aspects of my role. Each day is very different. Um, the beauty of human resources is you can't really predict what's about to happen. Um, and I enjoy working with the people and supporting the people and the society as well. The department that I work within is uh, human resources and people development. And we play a vital role in supporting the organisation's performance and also our employees and developing our employees' careers within the society. So my main kind of responsibilities include overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the department. Um, we have a HR assistant and a HR administrator, and we also have a dedicated training team as well with a people development manager and assistant manager. Um, and we also have to obviously ensure that we are responding to employee queries within um, a timely time frame. And we also think about new ways that we can engage with our staff members and make their employee experience uh, a positive one. So in addition to that, I'm also a mental health first aider. 
So I'm responsible for um, supporting the mental health and well-being of our staff members and promoting mental health and well-being within the workplace. Um, we currently have a committee of employees who have volunteered to champion mental health throughout the society, which has been fantastic. Um, and I lead that committee on a monthly basis. Um, we encourage open conversations, talking about mental health problems, um, and it enables us to listen to each other and support each other as well. So our department as a whole are responsible for um, monthly payroll. We're responsible for um, staff benefit schemes and recognition schemes. We are also responsible for recruiting new staff into the society um, and also training them all the way from induction up to mortgage advisor or director or whatever it is that they want their career path to be. Um, so we really do have an inclusive and flexible culture at Hinkley and Rugby um, and we are committed to growing our people um, and growing our own and we support them with opportunities to um, do training and develop within their roles. Um, at Hinkley and Rugby Building Society we have various different departments um, where we can offer career opportunities such as our mortgage department which is our largest department and we have around 40 staff members within our mortgage department um, and that's built up of mortgage advisors and mortgage assistants and also um, management and um, underwriters as well. And our mortgage team are responsible for um, talking to our members and advising them of the best mortgages that to take out based on their current circumstances and also supporting them throughout their mortgage um, kind of life cycle with us. Other departments that we have within the building society is business development and sales. Um, we have a savings department um, and we also have our branch team as well, um, which work within our branches um, that you may see on the local high streets. And they're really kind of the heart of the building society and they greet our members on a daily basis with a smile. Um, and their role is very important to the work that we do. In addition to that, we have our internal kind of functional teams as well, such as human resources and people development. Um, we have finance department, risk and compliance and IT. Um, so there really is a lot of variety of different roles and departments that you can work within, within Hinkley and Rugby Building Society. And I suppose to just kind of finish off is really my advice and tips to you would be to do some research and look into the different career paths that are available um, and what qualifications are required to enter in those career paths. Um, and as you can see from my personal experience, I've completed many different qualifications um, and I'm still learning and taking on new challenges now with my new um, master's degree that I've undertaken. Um, and really push your boundaries. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zones. Um, and also be very patient. Landing the dream job, job takes a lot of time and determination. Don't ever lose sight of that end goal. And if you work hard enough towards it, you can achieve it. And I think um, my personal experience has been a great example of that. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of really my career so far. Thanks, Kelly. That was wonderful. Um, we had one question from Dylan. I can see. Are you planning to go up from HR? So where's next for you from here? So our department, um, I'm the HR manager and we have a head of HR as well. Um, and I think for me within my role, it's really now kind of strengthening my role. I've been with Hinkley and Rugby Building Society for two years um, and I've been a HR manager for two years. And I'm still learning each day and developing and strengthening my skills. Um, so that was kind of my end goal if there's anything any more opportunities that become available i'll be definitely going for those um but at the moment it's really kind of strengthening my knowledge and understanding even more of human resources brilliant i was going to ask um did you know about when you were at school did you know about the role of hr and you actually answered that in your in your talk and i think that sends over a really um big message that um, if you hear about something, it sounds interesting, research, research, and find what qualifications you need to do that. Yes, um, definitely. Talk to people, see who you need to talk to. Yes, definitely. Any more questions from anybody? I can't see any written. Um, Kelly is staying, so if you can think of a question you'd like to ask Kelly at the end, um, I'm sure she'll be very pleased to answer. Um, but we'll move on. Thank you so much for that, Kelly. And we'll no move problem. on to... Um, Nick Tooley, who's next. 
Oh, so someone's asked about money, Kelly, but we'll talk about that at the end if you want <laughs> to talk about it. But yeah. Well, um, unless you want to answer it now, it's up to you. I can answer it now. Yes. What, what was the question? Sorry. So someone said, how much money do you get? Um, but maybe, Kelly, if you talk about when you start out in that kind of career, what kind of wage you would maybe start on? Yeah, so when you start um, as a HR administrator, uh, which was my current role, uh, at my previous role, sorry, the salary range for that position is probably from around 18,000 a year. Um, but it really depends on the sector that you work within as well um, and the responsibilities within that role. And obviously, as you can imagine, as you work up through um, the kind of HR positions, the salaries and in does expand. Um, but it also depends on your location as well. If you're working within a city environment, um, obviously your, your opportunities for more pay is greater. Um, but obviously as you work up, your pay will increase. Um, so, but always obviously expect to start at a junior level and, and work your way up. Brilliant, thanks Kelly. We've got one more. Do you ever feel your job interferes with your personal life? Um, I think at the start it probably did, but you you learn to be able to um, leave your I I class it as my work head and my home head. So when I leave work at the end of the day, I leave my work head at work. Um, and I commute home, which is about 30 minute drive. And that 30 minute drive on my way home is time for me to kind of relax from the day and really set my mind into being at home um, with my lovely dog and my partner um, and really kind of try and forget about, um, you know, what's been happening at work during that day. And it's so important for mental health to be able to do that as well and have that separation between work and home life. Lovely, thanks. What they're coming, they're coming quick and fast. How are you dealing with the COVID-19? So you're working from home, Kelly, aren't you at the moment? Do you I want am, to yes to let everybody know how that's going? Yes, it's going really well. Um, the Building Society um, was is a very traditional um, way of working. When I started working at the Building Society, um, we didn't really have portable devices and laptops and things like that. And working from home was never really heard of. Um, but luckily we transitioned very well into working from home. We have around 80 um, staff at head office who are all now working from home. Um, and our branches are still operating, they're still open, um, but obviously we've put in place lots of PPE and health and safety um, precautions and things like that to protect them from the virus. But working from home has been a great opportunity and the one message that we are taking from this is what flexibility can we now offer moving forward and what have we learned from this situation and how can we make that a positive message um, so we are willing to be a lot more flexible with our staff members enabling people to work from home and also um, kind of just work around their their lives as well really and just having a better work-life balance for everybody. Brilliant, thank you. No problem. Okay, so no more questions. Thank you so much, Kelly. We'll move on to Nick Tooley, who works for a construction company, and he'll tell you about what he does. Thank you, Nick. Uh, thanks, Helen. Thanks, Kelly. Um, I've got a slightly different story to, to Kelly, so it's quite interesting, really. It's almost as if this was planned. Well, I'm very impressed, unless um, she cares. Okay, so yeah, my name is Nick Tooley. I work for uh, Bowman Kirkland, which are a fairly large national construction company, family owned. Um, so we're one of the biggest family owned construction companies in the UK, if not Europe. Um, but I've only been here for a fairly short period. Um, so I'll give you a very quick update on my long and lengthy career uh, because I started uh, in, in, in the civil service in the annals of time, a long, long time ago um, when we didn't even have computers at all. Um, role in the civil service has varied and I ended up in HR strangely enough um, Kelly um, which was quite an interesting um, although I didn't do what I would call operational HR which I think you, you all might be doing I, I was mainly sort of involved in projects and things like that but I served served it feels like a sentence I did 42 years in the civil service um, joined the civil service without a clue as to what I was going to do I had absolutely no idea and I started off believe it or not collecting tax I used to actually pound the streets, um, harassing and annoying people um, and trying to get money out of them. Not easy when you're five foot six, but I learned to run fast. Um, 
and like I say, over a 40 year period, I had a very, very diverse career. I didn't have any specific technical qualifications. I just left school with my school qualifications, um, something that they used to call O-levels. Um, didn't go to university. Um, I went straight to work because that was just my plan. That's what I wanted to do. Um, I kind of paid off, I suppose. So after 40 odd years, and um, like I say, ending up in, in HR as a project manager, um, handling projects with budgets up to about six million quid affecting the whole of the civil service, um, which is around about 400,000 people or, or was. Um, then I hit uh, the, the magical figure from the civil service became 60 and 60 means that you can retire. So I did. Just before I retired, I spent uh, 18 months on a secondment um, so I was kind of sent out on loan. The civil service paid my salary, but I was working for one of the government, uh, one government, a charity called Business in the Community, which belongs to Prince. It's one of Prince Charles's lesser known charities, um, which does exactly what it says in the tin. It meant that I was um, helping to link businesses with, with communities. So charities, community groups, anything that would benefit the community as a whole, a completely different role to the one I had in the civil service. Um, and it was quite an eye opener, really. And it, but it was that knowledge that I gained from that particular uh, role that helped me get the job in at Bowman and Kirkland, because my role at, at Bowman and Kirkland is actually well-being and engagement manager at uh, the Foss Park site. If I don't know if anybody's been past Foss Park recently, it's pretty quiet at the moment, but it used to be quite busy. But we're building uh, Foss Park West. So we're extending Foss Park. Um, we would, the buildings were due to open in October this year, I think, but I suspect the COVID-19 thing has um, just delayed things a little. But my role is quite specific there. It is to help uh, and, and look at the well-being of, the, um, of, of everybody on site, um, and, uh, which is a little bit unusual because... Um, the site is um, operated by Bowman Kirkland. We run it, we manage it, but most people that actually do the work on site are contractors and subcontractors. So we're not, we don't employ them. We don't have responsibility for them. But what we've said that we would do on this particular occasion is try and look after them. You know, somebody needs to coordinate it and do it all so that the construction industry can move on. It's not got a very good reputation. Um, and which we are, we and the, and the whole of the industry uh, is, trying to bring that into the um, bring that into the 21st century okay so there's, there's a lot there and there's a lot that we've been doing uh, and the other side of that is the engagement side which is kind of why I'm here um, so it's engaging with the community to see what we can do directly apart from building some lovely new shops um, to go and spend your money in um, the idea is that while we're here to do whatever we can with the community which is why I've engaged with Leicestershire Cares and doing things like this. Um, I'm actually at the moment sitting in a, a little room at um, the Glenfield Hospital. Um, the Glenfield Hospital has a, a, a something called the Secret Garden, which is a Victorian walled garden. It is secret, it is hidden. Most of the staff don't know it exists. Um, and they're trying to restore it, particularly during the current period with, with, the, um, with, with the, the stress that the nursing staff are under. Um, so I was introduced to the guys that are trying to get this uh, restored. It's, um, it's an acre garden, so it's pretty big. Um, and I'm actually here today helping. We've already uh, uh, turfed a very large area, so it would give more room for nurses to come in and chill and relax and um, recover from the stresses and strains of, of life on the wards. Um, so that's the sort of thing that I'm doing as well. So my role in construction is, is particularly unusual. So just to talk more generally about construction, um, which is really, I suspect, why I'm here. Um, people tend to think about construction as being, um, excuse me, if I just get a little bit non-PC for the moment, as being big airy blokes, um, you know, working in the mud, wielding hammers, laying bricks, and that's about it. Um, one of my roles is to try and get across to people like yourselves um, that actually there's careers in construction are as varied as you could possibly imagine. There's two sides to construction. You have got what we call the trade side, which is 
the bricklayers, the joiners, the electricians, the plumbers, the bit that most people know about and understand, the cladders, the, 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 um, the guys that fit the windows, the glaziers, or But there's the other side. Somebody has to run it and manage it. You know, there are people at Foss Park wearing Armani suits, driving Mercedes Benz, who work in the construction industry and um, doing pretty well out of it. Thank you very much. Um, uh, now, some of them, the, the, the top guy at Foss Park is our contract manager. He manages the contract between uh, Bowman Kirkland and the Crown Estate, who actually own Foss Park. They own the, the land. Um, he started off as a joiner. And now he is... I don't know if it's an Armani suit or an M&S suit, but he looks pretty smart. Um, and yes, he does drive a company Mercedes-Benz. So there are so many different aspects. And construction isn't the only industry like that. You know, if you're thinking of any other industry, whether it's the banking industry, which I think is a generic term, Kelly, for, for, for your industry as well, there are, apart from the bricklayers and joiners, there are many, many, many different roles within that industry. And I found that particularly in the civil service as well. Um, you know, you, you will probably have everything from admin to specialist, and that specialist can be absolutely anything. Uh, and the same goes for construction specialists. We've got architects, we have lawyers, uh, we have accountants, um, as do most companies. Nearly every business will have that kind of thing if it's, if it's large enough. Um, and then, like I say, on the other side, you've got uh, mechanics, fitters, crane drivers, ground workers who... who drive the dumper trucks around in the holes and, and whatever it is that they do, uh, electricians, architects. There's even the extreme of, um, of, of having uh, archaeologists, because whenever we start a site, or whenever any construction company starts a site, the first thing they almost have to do is to have it uh, scanned from an archaeological perspective, big words, early morning, um, particularly around Leicester, because, you know, you tend to find kings buried under car parks and things like that. Um, but that's something that happens across the whole of the UK. Um, we have to do that. We have to check, because if there is anything there, anything significant of architectural interest or from a wildlife perspective, we can't start work. We have to get it clear. We have to get it sorted. Um, so is somebody else monitoring the questions? Will you throw them at me later, Helen? Or You're on mute, love. If you're ready for me to ask some, I can ask some of them now. Would you I'll like that? To wind up then, and then I'll hand over to you to sort the questions out. Is that okay? Can I yeah, keep that's seeing, absolutely fine. Keep yeah. seeing pop up. I can keep um, track of them. Okay, super duper. Thank you. So yeah, I think that's it. In summary, you know, it, it, the the big message from me is um, construction. Don't just think about working in minus temperatures and in the mud. Um, there are loads and loads of office jobs. Um, Bowman Kirkland, we probably have about 50, 60 staff on site at its peak, none of which are trades. They're all in the office, but they're not in the office all the time because they're on site a lot, sorting out issues, making sure everything's done properly, built properly, um, and we adhere to all the regulations, etc., etc. Um, I think I'll wind it up there. Um, um, just, just one thing to say, but it'll probably come out in a question, is that who earns the most money on a site? Probably the bricklayers. If they work hard enough, they can earn well over a thousand pounds a week. Um, but they do have to work very, very hard to get that. Uh, summary. Fantastic. Have Thanks, Nick. I'll just ask something myself first, because as you said about the bricklayers probably earning the most, and that's probably the most entry level of jobs, isn't it? So what, how, would you offer apprenticeships for bricklayers? Absolutely. Um, uh, Bowman Kirkland don't. We don't employ bricklayers directly, but uh, there are other companies and organisations that work for us that provide that, um, that speciality. Um, and I, there are two people that we've been working with, um, one of the district councils, and there are two school, two students who've been on the site visit and, and spoken to the, to the bricklayers on site, a company called Caxton's, they're local, um, and they were offered apprenticeships on the spot. Fantastic. Uh, apprenticeships are out there. It's probably the best way to get into the trades um, in some way. Either you've either got to do it yourself, go to college, get all the necessary qualifications for that, or you can do it as an apprenticeship. My advice would be an apprenticeship pays while you're doing it. It has to be the best way forward. Yeah. 
Lovely. I'll go to Sadia's question. Have you always liked your job or did you have you ever wanted another one? Um, with this job, I've only been here for about 18 months um, and, and thoroughly enjoy it. It has challenges, as does every job. There's no such thing as perfection. Um, it has challenges. It has frustrations. Um, certainly wouldn't change it for anything at the moment. The civil service, over 40 odd years, uh, absolutely. I had some dreadful jobs that I really hated. I worked for some dreadful people, worked with some dreadful people. And you have two options. You either put up with it or you do something about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you're in a fairly large organization, there are usually options, um, as Kelly was saying earlier, you know, you can look around, uh, you can join a construction company like Steve did, who's our contract manager as a joiner. He, he, he did the joiner, he did his apprenticeship for about six months, realized it really wasn't for him, put himself through university and came out in the management side. So um, yes and no is the answer to that question. And if you're, if you're not happy, do something about it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. What qualifications did you need to get to do the job you're doing now? To do the job I'm doing now, I needed experience. That was all I needed. Um, and I, I do find that experience, a lot of employers now are looking for experience. They want basic qualifications. They need to know that you are educated to a certain level, uh, which is why they'll always look for you know, maths and English and things like that when you're doing your GCSEs. Uh, but I, I, yeah, it was experience very much that, that got me this job. The experience I got with, not with the civil service over 40 years, but I did 18 months with British, with um, business in the community. Um, and a, another question that may follow this is, well, how do you get experience? Not an easy one to, when you're a student. Um, the voluntary sector is the best, easiest and most fulfilling way to get experience because it, it, you can get experience in anything from the voluntary sector, uh, talk to Leicester She Cares. Yeah, thank you. Um, then there was a bit of a conversation going about, because um, you mentioned finding bodies in construction. So we've had a couple of students sort of typing questions about that. If you, f- if you find a body, what do you do with it? Don't know if you want to answer that sensibly, Nick. <laughs> or shall we something. end this conversation? Yes, I think as long as it's a really ancient one, it's not a major issue. You can get a lot of publicity out of that. If it's a, excuse me, fairly fresh one, you have an issue and you have a problem. I think what what Nick was was referring to was the King Richard that was found underneath the car park. If you want to to research that student, find out a bit about it. Yeah, and it can halt a whole building site. We, we, uh, Bowman Kirkland have had an issue like that with an archaeological find. And we, uh, we were building a Sainsbury supermarket. Uh, it was going to go on. So we literally had to move the supermarket two or three metres to one side mm-hmm. to carry on with the construction and leave the archaeological site till the, till the very end. It's very important. Lovely. Thank you, Nick. Any more questions from anybody? Nobody's asked about money. I, I don't, did, you touched on money, didn't you? Did you say something about money at one point? Oh, Ricky's can earn a grand a week plus. Yeah. Um, as, as can some of the other trades because they're paid basically on how many bricks they lay. So if you want to get really busy, work really hard and lay lots of bricks, then you're going to make an awful lot of money. Um, the the Bowman Kirkland staff, we're all salaried. Um, and, and it, it does vary, but there is money to be made in construction without a doubt. And I have to say one last thing. Um, is, is that there are there is a shortage of trades. So if anybody's thinking about an apprenticeship as a bricklayer, a joiner, an electrician, a plumber, or anything like that, I can highly recommend it. A, you'll never be out of work if you could. If you're not very good, then you may struggle a little bit, but that's down to you. Um, and B, there's an awful lot of money to be made. Um, just diagonally across the road from where I live is a plumber. He drives a Bentley. So I think the message there is if you work hard, you can earn a lot of money in that trade. Without a doubt. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, that's been brilliant um, for both Kelly and Nick today. Um, Thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, we've got another webinar in um, in two weeks' time, if you'd like to join. Um, So if no one has any more questions, I think we'll... um... The civil service, Helen? Did I see one about... 
from Leona, were you scared starting a job at a big organisation such as a civil service? Sorry, Leona, for missing that one. It's all right. Uh, short answer to that is uh, I didn't realise what the civil service was when I joined. I was 17. Uh, I didn't realise it was such a massive, massive organisation. So initially, no. Um, and as I stayed, you gain in confidence, you understand the beast. And eventually I was working uh, for the cabinet office, which is at the centre of the civil service, working for and with 400,000 odd, odd people. Um, luckily, I had the experience by then, so I wasn't scared. Probably would have been otherwise. But what, what would be your message for anybody that was fright, was scared to take a step into something, the unknown or... Do it. Absolutely do it. You'll find that when you get there, the unknown might be scary, but the people that work there as well are usually pretty nice mm -hmm. and they will normally generally help you. Um, you've probably got an excellent HR function. Those people are always there to help if you have any specific problems. And um, one of the best things that I've found after 43 and a half years work is working with people. I love the people that I work with. Mm -hmm. well, the jobs aren't so good, but the people are great. <laughs> lovely well i think that's it yeah um well it's been brilliant today hearing from kelly and nick so thank you again and Pleasure. um i hope we can you can join again on the next webinar take care everybody stay safe and i'll see you again soon thank, thank you bye everybody